Hey there, and welcome to the Overcomers Overcoming Podcast. It is great to have you join us. This podcast series features those who have gained victory over a life encounter. With that life experience, we encourage those who are experiencing something that might seem to be insurmountable. We advance and encourage others by passing forward evaluated life experiences. We have three objectives in this podcast series. We want to encourage those who are engaged in any type of life encounter by offering to walk with you to help you gain victory over anything that might seem impossible. We want to share our experience to help you. Our second objective is to help you develop a confident resolve that there are multiple options to get past any life obstacle. It's a matter of thinking into the situation. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If you are facing a dilemma resulting from a previous decision you wish you could reverse, we want to help you think into all of the facts and factors involved in making an informed decision. I'm Ron Cooper, founder of The Cooper Culture. I'm with my wife and business manager, Marty. Together, we are The Cooper Culture Company, who is sponsoring this podcast series. Today, we feature Jonna Masick for our third episode where she continues a part of her life story of describing being a mother to eight children. Two of the children are those with special abilities, those who process information just a little bit different from us. And you'll learn from her what I, for me was just an intriguing story of her daughter who was born nonverbal. Jana learned how to teach sign language to her daughter and they communicate that way. It's a very inspiring story. Marty, what are some takeaways our listeners can gain from Jonna? Jonna took on a daughter. She married a gentleman that had this daughter and learned to love that daughter because that daughter is special. She is, has special abilities. And to think that she taught her sign language so that they could communicate. And after she taught the sign language, how the daughter just blossomed. To think that the daughter now, even though she's nonverbal, will sing in church. So this is an amazing story. Jonah gives all the honor and glory to our Lord. And that thrills my heart. And it's a great story, Marty. Nothing is too difficult for our Lord to bring us through and make good out of what otherwise may seem to be something bad. Let's listen and learn together. Jonna, welcome back for our second episode. Our listeners are going to be very interested in some more of your life. And you made it through some very difficult times of debt, death, and so forth. But we left off our last conversation discussing children who have, I'm going to use it uh, maybe a little bit different term, children who have special abilities Sometimes these are termed children with special needs. I want to be very careful to our listeners that I do not want to imply any type labeling or anything of that sort. But Jonna, you have some very special experience, very special insight into children that deserve our tailored attention. We need to learn to adapt to them and you have some very valuable information for our listeners. Jana, welcome back. Well, thank you so much, Ron, for your warm welcome. And I am really excited to be here to also give some encouragement to you as you're listening in today in your situation and hope you can find this empowering, inspiring, and, and helpful to you as a listener today. Thank you, Jana. Tell our listeners a little bit about your experience with those children with special needs or special abilities, whatever term we choose to use, we believe God created everyone and everyone that God created functions best with connected relationships. Yes, amen to that. I fully agree with you. Having child or children that have special needs, and I like to call them also special abilities, is not something that any would consider to say it's a disabled vehicle. Whenever I, f I feel people are saying disabilities, you know, or disabled person, it sounds like, you know, there's a disabled vehicle that sits on the side of the road and there's nothing else to it. So as human beings, you know, God created us with the body, with the soul and with the spirit. 
sometimes our body, sometimes our mind have challenges. Although we have challenges, it's also amazingly how I think God converts for our other parts of a body or mind or, or soul to actually have a special abilities. And that's why I, I feel that calling it a children with special abilities or adults with special abilities is, is really appropriate. So a little bit about my stories. It's fascinating how you never know, Ron, and, and as you listen, is what's going to be prepared on our way, right? Sometimes it's unexpected. Very well said. And uh, Jonna, you know, the very familiar expression that uh, when we bring children into the world, instruction manuals are not included. Some of us need to learn on the fly and we need to adapt. And our listeners are going to be very interested in knowing just how you did all of this, how you put it together. Perhaps you were uniquely yes. equipped to deal with, but maybe you had to learn on the fly. I had to learn on the fly. I absolutely was not equipped at all. And as you listened, you might have heard our story on the previous episode, but if you haven't, if it's the first time you're hearing my story, I want to give just a little bit of an overview. I met my husband, uh, now husband, on the Christian website. We were living on the opposite sides of the world. He came to visit and we fell in love. He brought me to the United States. One of the things that was a challenge for me a little bit is that he did have a daughter with special needs, special abilities. She was nonverbal and I had no idea how to, how to handle it. I had no idea how to be a mom because I've never been a mom and much less to, you know, to tender to the kid that need extra care. So when we came, when we flew to the United States, actually the day before that we got here, she got hit by a car riding a bicycle. I met her at the hospital on the hospital bed fighting for her life. You know, I was just overwhelmed with compassion and was just fully embracing that I am here for a reason, you know, and uh, when we got married, we took her out of rehab and brought her home. I, I quickly realized that she, she needed love. She needed a lot of attention and she was that little lost soul in this world that had no ways to communicate. And she had meningitis when she was a baby. She was not able to communicate, she was nonverbal, and she was diagnosed with autism, but then the diagnosis went uh, in a different route after re-evaluation after the accident, and she was actually diagnosed with traumatic brain injury. There was a lot of challenges when you have an eight-year-old that cannot communicate, that has an understanding of about uh, probably a two-year-old child, maybe even less than that trying to figure out how to navigate that, how to, you know, manage some of the outbursts, some of the tantrums, some of the unknown things. There's a lot to that. So yes, it's learning on the fly. And then my second experience was actually with my firstborn child had some difficulties with speech. He was speaking very unclearly. He had a lot of challenges in the kindergarten and the first grade. He was failing. He could not read or decode very well to get an evaluation for him and help him get him a lot of help to get through school. He was also diagnosed with Asperger's, which is, you know, lower spectrum of autism and uh, risk of dyslexia. And uh, it just had a lot of behavioral things that let's say a little bit atypical, but I also say that a lot of parents, I think are labeling also their children's behavior, just to let them be kids, kids are kids and they're all different kids and they're all developing differently. But it was a second layer of learning for me, how to, how to navigate through that journey. And then of course, God has blessed me with six more children. So we have eight in the household. It's a 10 of us together. So every day you just discover that each child is unique and each one indeed have their unique abilities. We just need to do our best to love them, to help them, to support them, but at the same time to give that love, support, and grace to ourselves as parents, because that is so important. Well, Marty and I, along with our listeners, just deeply admire you for raising eight children. Oh my goodness. There are many of us who would say, not sure I could possibly do that. One or two, that number was challenging enough. Did you and your husband readily work well together with your daughter? Well, actually, two of your children. 
to learn about them and adapt to them. And I'll ask, I'll just add along with this, Marty and I and many of our listeners agree that labeling, boy, that's, that's just terrible. Words matter. And words, many people assimilate words that, oh, you're different, you're not able to learn, anything like that. Some people take those words to heart and they become almost self-fulfilling. But Jonna, you're taking us on a very extensive journey. We're interested in learning more. Well, thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate your encouragement. And I would say I was much more stressed and tense and overwhelmed with two children than I am right. It's very counterintuitive, though, because you would say, what? You were more stressed with two when then you have eight? That makes no sense. I give you a little bit of a side story. When I was pregnant with my third child, well, I had Sherilyn and two of mine. So I was fourth for the family. I was just very overwhelmed. And I thought, how am I going to manage it? How am I, how in the world, I, you know, God, do you really, are you really sure what you're giving me? I, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm just so lost. I'm stressed. And I was visiting my midwife. And uh, I was sitting there really nervous and kind of frustrated a little bit. Two kids with, with special abilities. It's, you know, it's, it's challenging. This one lady comes in and she's pregnant and she's just so full of grace, so full of radiancy, life. And I'm like, wow, she must be pregnant with her first one. And we chatted a little bit and said, so is it your first kid? And she's like, no, it's my seventh. Uh, my jaw dropped. I said, seventh? And she's like, well, I have six boys and this is my seventh boy. And I just couldn't believe my eyes, but I believe they're always God's interaction. So even if you're listening to this story right now and you feel, wow, this person is, you know, special. This is not like me. I am drowning. I'm frustrated. No, 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 no. I believe in God's divine interactions. And there's a reason why you're listening to that because I was on that side where I was frustrated and I just didn't know. I didn't have skill set or tools or I was just out of um, my own efforts. But here God sends me this woman that is pregnant with her seventh child. She has six boys that she was homeschooling, which is still, you know, for me, a little bit of a far, far out of reach. And pregnant with her servants and so happy, so full of grace. And I, and I just couldn't believe it. I said, how do you do this? How do you do this? And she looked at me and she said, it's God's grace. God's grace is sufficient for me. Every day he gives me support, encouragement, love, joy, and strength that I need for this day. And that is enough. Until this day, this words just a reminder to me when I'm struggling, when I am feeling like I'm at my nuts, I'm at my age, I'm losing my mind or something is happening that is crazy in the house. The words just got remind to me, my grace is sufficient. Turn to me. You know, what happens is sometimes we run on empty. We don't charge our own batteries. We don't rest well. We don't spend time with the God. We don't pray. We don't read. We don't just rest a little bit or sleep well. And we are running, 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 trying to give it all, especially as mothers, I feel we, we are guilty of that. And then self-criticizing ourselves for not being enough, for not doing enough, for not loving enough, or not being strict enough, whatever enough. But I tell you today, if you have all of these struggles, difficulties, challenges, and worries and questions, there's no better place. There's no better person for you to come than to Jesus. His grace is sufficient. And the grace is really God coming to you for you to experience him, to enjoy him, so you can have this energy, this eternal energy installed into you as a person that can help you carry through everything that is in front of you. And this is for this day. Sometimes we worry so much about what's in the future, or we are upset about what happened in the past. For me, the simple is right now, today is a day. I'm alive. I'm happy. All is well. God is with me. God, give me strength to carry through today. So I want to encourage you through the story to say it's difficult. It's hard. The t- there are some days, there are some moments that you just, you do not know how to navigate them. But turn to God. Ask him, question him, seek him. He is there and he will not fail to respond to you 
and to help you carry through whatever is in front of you. Thank you for that very positive message. Yes, his grace is sufficient. I'm thinking also of 1 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul was addressing the church of Corinth and he is saying to his listeners, readers, that our Lord will not allow us to go through anything that we cannot handle. But on the, I'm going to give you a transliteration on the back side of that when you've made it through and you've grown through this, I, God, want for you to pass it forward. And that's what this podcast is about, Jonna. To our listeners, we're passing forward your life experience and how God has brought you to this point and will continue to work through you. But I'm very curious on behalf of our listeners, you had two what seems very different children, very different abilities, very different needs to raise. Is that accurate? Yes, that is correct. So Sherilyn is nonverbal. She's still nonverbal. She says a couple words. She says ma and home a little bit, but the way to communicate was with her to learn sign language. And that really tremendously expedited her development, her understanding, because she was not taught sign language until I got here and until that accident. She was diagnosed and labeled as an autistic child and she had no tools or resources to communicate. She couldn't read. She obviously could not speak. She could hear something, but she could not express herself in any way. So I think there's a lot of mistakes for nonverbal happening where they say, well, they're not deaf, so they don't, you know, no, nobody's kind of thinking to teach them sign language, but for nonverbal children, I, for her anyway, in her experience, that was a tremendous shift. We started with sign language, we started with alphabet at the age of eight, and she can now read, she can write some things, she keeps up the calendar, she communicates fl- fl- fluently in sign language. It's, it's a huge, huge improvement. With my son, there were a lot of challenges with reading. He could not read until he was in the third grade and we had to get him, you know, in a special, special school. He's, he's overcome a lot of his behavioral and other challenges as well. And I, I'm very grateful that we were able to get the support that he needed at that time. Gosh, thank you for uh, that very in-depth explanation. For your daughter, is there a medical diagnosis that she likely will never be able to speak? With the traumatic brain injury that she had, with the meningitis and the swelling that she had in the brain, I, I, I believe that the brain region that corresponds to speech was affected. However, I do not want to say never, because I believe that our God is a God of impossibilities. He makes impossible possible. And I have hope and I have faith that he he has something for her special. She loves Jesus. She loves going to church. She signs Jesus. She likes to sing. And I am praying that God gives her the capacity to receive him and be born again. And it's in his hands. He can, he, he was able to raise dead from, you know, the people from the death. It's, it's nothing is impossible for him. I just say, I have faith that he has something special prepared for her. And I, as a parent and my husband, as a parent, we just do our best to help her and support her with what we have, with the resources we have and have her to be as, as independent as she can be. I asked you uh, very specifically in the context of a medical diagnosis, because many people have been diagnosed as whatever, but through God's help, our prayer support, working together, many people have overcome what the medical community thought was just impossible, and we watch miracles happen virtually daily. So that's just great. I agree. I agree with you, uh, Ron, on that. And I also say that a lot of it depends on encouragement, belief, faith, definitely good diet, and, and just overall I think bringing into the atmosphere of love and connection is so important because when you feel judged, even if you don't have challenges like many kids have, 
you wither, you shrink, you kind of slow down. But when you are encouraged and loved and supported, you feel to be straightened up and, you know, believe in yourself. And I think that belief is so vital to instill in, in those kids to say anything is, everything is possible. What you just said is very, very important. I want our listeners to particularly pay attention right now. I, I am not a physician, so I don't want to come across like that at all. But I will say it seems a very common language, and I use the term language in quotes, is when we show with our care, I believe in you, for the most powerful words we can possibly generate and the care, I believe the common language is when we show that in our heart, with our smile, with our words, I believe in you, I care for you. I think, Jonna, that's a language that anybody, everybody can understand that is communicated somehow, even with those who have a different speech pattern than we do. That's just my personal belief. I agree with you, Ron. I agree with you. It's, uh, it's been proven uh, scientifically, the feelings are energy. Sometimes you come in the room, people don't have to tell you things, right? You sense, oh, there might be some argument. There might be some heated situations happening. So you, you sense it on a very, I, I almost say subconscious level. In the same way, our children, when we, when we raise them, they sense our worries, they sense our anxieties. And that is, is so important for parents, I think, to help themselves to go up on that scale of energy instead of being frustrated, worried, negative, you know, which is so easy to go into. It is just so easy to look at your real situation and say, oh my, there is no hope. You know, I, it's, it's just so horrible. I could tell you when you are running out of your resources, your capabilities, your strengths, when you're running on thin, again, come to the infinite Lord, to his positive, loving being and say, God, give me some of yourself. I don't have nothing left in me. I even don't have hope. I don't even have faith at this point. Please be my faith. Please be my hope. Please come in and take this, you know, my being, first of all, in the, in the, you know, in, in the control, embrace me, give me, fill me up. By doing this, then you will be able to deposit into your children, especially those children that need special care, because you can't give out of empty. The only thing you can give is what fills you. And if you're on empty or you're filled with rage and anger and frustration, that's the only thing you give. So I say be careful and be diligent and also be more of a intentional of what are you carrying within your heart day in and out, because that's what you're giving to your children. And for them to thrive, they need to be you know, embraced in this you know, energy of love, acceptance and belief. That is very important what you just said. I'm going to ask you to be very candid with our listeners. The expression, we certainly believe in it. You cannot give what you do not have. We intentionally need to fill the tank, so to speak, our attitude that I want to give love, I want to give hope, but I have to have that in me to give. Jonna, I'm going to believe there have been times in your life, and I'm going to ask you to be very vulnerable with our listeners, that you have felt, man, my love, my compassion, my whatever I want to give, I just feel I'm empty. I'm on. I'm running on empty. I, I don't have any more I can give. Have you felt that way at times where you just felt that I need to be left alone or something I'd, so that I can recover and fill my tank from this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I could say, I could share vulnerably. It, sometimes it's been for months and there was a period where it's just been ongoing, where I felt like I was just in the shadow of valley of death. I could tell you, even as a believer, I had thoughts, is it even, even worthy? You know, is it, what is it all to life? But then Another story that I want to re remind you that God gives you 
people, God gives you words, God gives you situations to help you through those dark valley times, because sometimes those, those dark valley times are not just moments. They're not just days. Sometimes they're more than weeks. Sometimes there's more than months. You may be feeling like you're in this dark valley for years, but I want to encourage you to not lose hope, do not give up on your life, do not give up on this, this gift that God gave you that is called life. In one of those dark days, I went to a hairdresser and I told my husband, I need to go get a haircut. And the hairdresser is very nice gentleman. And we just had a little conversation and he said, you know, I really admire you, how you manage. And I think I had like five kids at that time. And it was challenging for me. I kind of felt I was down. He said, I really admire how you manage things. You know, you're just always so upbeat, so happy. And I looked at him I'm like, that's not the case. You know, I'm kind of struggling here. And he's like, well, you know, but I just want to, I, I just, I'm just encouraged by you. I said, really? And he said, you know what, I, you know, I, I had a, a relative, this relative uh, married, you know, was married and, and his wife had two children and then she got pregnant and she had a four, you know, third child and uh, she went into spiral depression. She basically left the children, took her life. Her youngest child was four months old. The other two were under five. She took her life because she felt she couldn't handle she couldn't deal with the situation anymore. And there was a father that just lost his wife with three kids trying to figure out how to go on. That story just deeply, deeply, deeply touched me. And I felt that was a word from God to say, no matter how hard it seems, no matter how difficult or dark it may be, don't give up on your life. Don't give the enemy, Satan, a way to take your life and to rob your family or your children of what you can offer to them. Turn to God and say, God, again, help me. So through difficult times, I think what helped me also is to realize I may not change my circumstances outwardly, but I have power to change my perception and my inner energy levels. How do I feel? How do I pond? Do I react or respond? So a lot of times we focus on changing our circumstances, which sometimes we can't, most of the times we can't, or we focus on changing people around us. So we say, well, if only if my husband be this way, or even only if my children be, you know, that way, then I will be happy. And so we're looking at some outward circumstances to feel us, to give us happiness, but that does not work that way. For me, the, the way towards freedom was and an the ability to handle life challenges a little bit more equipped to realize that I am actually in charge of my happiness. I am in charge of how I feel. I am in charge of how I want my life to go. Nobody else going to come and, you know, and outwardly in a physical huma, human way make me happy. I have to be in charge and I have to say, God, I want to be in charge and I want to invite you to come here and help me to prioritize, to get clear, to start dreaming again, to start thinking and envisioning and, and visualizing good things happening in my life and in life of my children and get back on my feet and do the best I can to let go of fears, guilt, and self-criticism here you go. Your answer is forgiveness. Forgive yourself for what you think you haven't done enough or why your children that way. Forgive yourself for not doing enough or not being enough or doing something wrong and ask God to help you forgive others. Sometimes that unforgiveness that you carry within you is the worst stress and the worst thing that you can inflict on yourself. So work through that. Learn and let go, forgive others for their imperfections. We're all imperfect and forgive yourself for your own imperfections. Embrace God's love, God's forgiveness, God's faithfulness, and do one, one day at a time, one moment at a time, start seeing better things for yourself. God will help you. Do you feel you are in a valley of despair? something that is causing you to feel despondent, discouraged, 
you may have been working with someone, working on a project, you've tried different things, nothing seems to work, it seems everything you have put into whatever you're working ends up at a dead end, nothing seems to be working. I wanna encourage you to reach out to someone who shares your values, shares your love, shares your desire to move forward and find those who can offer encouragement. They might be able to offer a different type solution from a different perspective. I wanna encourage you, do not quit. Do not isolate yourself, but rather get with those who want to help you advance, want to help you achieve whatever it is you're going for. When you are working with those kind of people, you will learn to overcome nothing too great of a challenge. I'm an advocate of the big, bold, bodacious projects moving forward. Go big or go home is a mantra for some. I want to encourage you, let's together work toward the greater good. We're with you. Everything you just said is so encouraging, Jonna. Can we close out with you telling our listeners and maybe the listener who right now is thinking, I have a child that's much like what you're describing, but I'm running on empty. I just feel that I'm totally drained and I just need some help because I'm not sure where to go from here. I don't want to give up, but I just don't know where to go. Is there a community? Is there a way to connect with you that we can encourage each other such that we can legitimately say, you will make it together, we will. Is there a community or so, or even something informal, Jana? Absolutely. I would love if you need some support and you need to just uh, have a conversation and just, just the hearing, you know, sometimes a listening ear is helpful. Feel free to connect with me, janamasic.com. Uh, you, you can reach me on LinkedIn, Jana Masic as well. I'll be happy to just, just have a conversation with you and encourage you. I would encourage also you to look for some local communities. There are some support that you could find usually in the community for special, special needs, special abilities, children and parents. I like the resources. One of the resources that have helped me tremendously are Signing Time. And Signing Time is the very fun, engaging series to teach children and adults how to use sign language in a very simple and fun way. You can find their products on their website, signingtime.com, I believe. And then there are resources for, you kind of have to see if you want to find some national resources, some some groups, or you can find and, and create local communities as well. It can be a lonely journey. So don't feel that you're isolated and they're by yourself. And the other thing I encourage is start sharing your story and sometimes start sharing your struggles. By doing that, then you can show people that other people that are maybe even in the worst conditions that you are, situation that you are, that you give them a little bit of hope. And this is how we can create the communities and connections. I start sharing my my story about, you know, share a is this gentleman that was in Belgium that reached out to me on LinkedIn and he said he has two kids with autism and he said he was deeply touched by my story and we connected and talked a little bit. So this is how we create is uh, we create community by going out there vulnerable and sharing stories, sharing, you know, what is happening in our lives hopefully encourage each other to go on and do the best we can and create a good, bright future for our kids as well. That's very well said, Jana. I want to encourage our listeners, let's work together, let's share together. Together, we can advance each other and we can help every one of us through various things that maybe at the moment seems too difficult to get through, but together we can make it. Jonna, on behalf of our listeners, thank you so much for sharing your life story. We look forward to continuing to follow with you. It's been absolute my pleasure. Thank you so much, Ron and Marty, for what you're doing. I appreciate you. Thank you. Are you at a point of feeling exasperated? Something to the effect of not sure that I can continue going on because I feel as if I've exhausted all of my energy, all of my resources, 
It's almost as if you're saying, I'm out of ideas. I'm not sure where to go. Many of us have gone through experiences like that. Some of us are at that point right now. My biggest, best encouragement for you is to never give up, but rather seek God's wisdom to know how to proceed, discern who the right people are, the best people to help you through and help you overcome any challenges you have. When your heart desire is to seek the greater good of people and you want to edify others, you're not out to bring attention to yourself, but rather you're out to help advance others when that is a part of your life goals, when that is a part of your heart's desire, when you work with others, when you seek and apply God's wisdom in your life, God will bring you through any challenge when that challenge is to seek the greater good, to advance others, to bring honor to God. There are many times we've all experienced the valley of despair when nothing seems to work. I'm just out of all resources, out of energy. When we get with others who are willing to pray with you, for you, and we're all seeking God's wisdom, we can, we will achieve the greater good because our Lord will lead us through these various challenges to help others achieve that good. Jonna has a very great life story of learning sign language, learning to communicate with her nonverbal daughter, and we may be taking on similar challenges. We just don't know how we're going to make it through to accomplish whatever it is we're doing. When we have reached a point of knowing we can't do this alone, we need God's help. God will help us through. God will lead us to others who can help us achieve the greater good, the greater benefit of what it is we want to achieve. Marty and I have taken on several what we call God-sized projects. We're involved in them right now. I can't control any part of that, but rather we seek God's wisdom to bring us through that. I want to encourage you to think big, bold, audacious but seek the help of, seek God's wisdom and prayer, but work with others who can help you achieve those big things that we alone cannot achieve. Some people need the encouragement of coaching and the coaching can help you through some of these low points in your life. Marty and I are certified life performance coaches through the Maxwell Certified Leadership Team. We want to help you achieve the greater good. We know the exhilaration of working through various challenges to reach the greater good of others. Let's work together. Contact us at ron at thecooperculture.com or marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com. Let's schedule a 30-minute complimentary coaching session. Through that, we can help you determine if we can help you reach the greater good of whatever it is you are seeking to achieve. We hope we can warrant a five-star rating with this podcast. We hope you will want to subscribe. We hope you'll want to share this podcast in the comment section, but also to share with your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn connections, your Instagram and Twitter communities. The more we share, the greater benefit we can learn from others, the greater benefit we will be to others as we learn together, share together, reach out together, seek God's help to help each other through the various challenges we have. Because when we take on big projects, let's consider taking on things that are too great for us personally to take on, but rather with God's wisdom, other people's help, who want to help us achieve together, we will. We want to help you to achieve whatever it is you're wanting to achieve together, we will. Let's work together, let's advance others. We look forward to working with you.